Erica. <laughs> and Galena will be here soon. And we're here to do an electrolyte tutorial for you. And Galena, this is, there is an attached document. It sort of looks like this. Um, and you can follow along if you want while we talk about these so, electrolytes. So, some norms can be found in Iggy on page 184. And the first one we're going to start with is sodium. The normal range for that is 135 to 145. And the big one you want to remember with sodium is that it affects your LOC, which is your level of consciousness. So you want to um, assess for confusion, seizures, fall risk. That was me falling, by the way. Um, and again, just safety is the big one here. So seizure precautions, you'll definitely see that in the future. Oh, and one more little piece. You remember from AMP, um, where sodium goes, water follows. So that can help too. Yes. Our next um, electrolyte is potassium. Its norms are from about three and a half to five. And the big thing with potassium, you'll hear it over and over again, is that it has an effect on your heart. Your heart. <laughs> potassium heart. Thank you, Kay. Heart. Yes. It, is, it normally exists in your intracellular fluid and moves out of the cell when we have hyperglycemia, as in with diabetic patients. One thing not to do when you are hypokalemic is to use salt substitutes because they contain potassium. potassium. K-exalate is something that you want to use to excrete the potassium. They bind to the potassium in your body and then excrete it. So that would be something like an antidote, right? If you've got too much potassium? Sure. All right, K-exalate for potassium, too much potassium. Lasix is also something you can use to rid your body of potassium. Um, when, so, what will you assess when you have high potassium? Again, Galena, heart. Yes. Cardiac assessment is big. Um, one thing that they'll talk about in, um, I can't remember, second semester, when you, have, you can get increased potassium when you have blood transfusions, and that's because of the lysing of the transfused red blood cells. Yes, and so it goes, because normally, again, it's in the intercellular space, and when the cells lies, it comes out, so you want to assess for that when giving blood transfusions. Make sure they're not um, above, what would the value be for high potassium? Five. Above five, yes, that's right. Another thing one of our instructors loved to point out was that when you have hyperkalemia, you, your, your heart will demonstrate tall peak T waves. Tall peak T waves! <laughs> on an ECG. Or an EKG. Tall ones. Tall ones. Tall ones. T. You don't know, okay. you probably don't know how to read an EKG yet. Calcium. Yeah, but you On to calcium. Um, hypercalcemia. Uh, one thing you want to remember is that it can cause uh, kidney stones. So a little jingle. Stones, bones, psychic moans, abdominal groans. So that's the kidney stones causes weak bones because the calcium is leached. Into the serum. Yes, into the serum, out of the, out of the bones, making them weak. Um, psychic moans indicating confusion or abdominal groans because they're going to have constipation, decreased peristalsis, constipation. Um, for hypo, you want to keep in mind chopsticks and trousseaus, which can be found on page pictures One, nine, three. Three. Thank you. of Iggy. Of Iggy. And the chopsticks is where you, um, you get this facial twitch when that nerve is stimulated. And trousseaus, the blood pressure cuff, is applied and you'll see the the contraction inwards of the hand, just like so. Could be on a test at some point. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. So let's say that one more time. Chopsticks and trousseaus for hypocalcemia. Hypo. Hypo. Okay. So it also um, keep cardiac in mind with, with calcium. That's an important one too. Um, and lastly, calcium has an inverse relationship with FOS. FOS. FOS goes down. Calcium goes up. FOS goes up. Calcium goes down. Moving on to FOS. All right, FOS. Um, some brief things. You can have circumoral tingling. I just like saying that, circumoral. Circumoral tingling. Oral. Tingling with hyperphosphatemia. And when you have hyperphosphatemia, you will um, have orders for FOS binders for your patient. Your patient should only take these when they, are, when they have just eaten or when they're eating. Because it takes the FOS from the food and prevents your body from absorbing it. Absorbing it, yes. Okay. On to mag. Lastly, mag. Um, magnesium is given to preterm labor patients to stop contractions because what magnesium does when it's high, you will experience depression, decreased deep 
tendon reflexes, or it will depress your mus muscular contractions. Therein, that would be useful in giving the um, magnesium to a pregnant patient that's having contractions because you want to relax them. Um, and if they're deep, so, you know, along with that train of thought, if they're deep tendon reflexes are absent. Absent, that would be an indication of too much mag. Too much magnesium. And we need to assess something that's very much more important. Than oh that. my gosh! <laughs> with high mag, you can have respiratory depression. This is me breathing really, really depressedly, <laughs> softly. Because always, what's, what are you going to think of? ABCs. Airway comes first, respiratory depression. So I think that just about sums it up. Um, oh wait, we forgot about this guy. In order to um, reverse the effects of high magnesium, you can give something called calcium gluconate, which is an antidote to magnesium sulfate. All right, just about out of time, but some, um, some things to consider, especially for the NCLEX, are nutritional sources of each of these electrolytes, which and that can be found on the attached, attached document. Yep. But also look up stuff for yourself. Take this attached document if you want, use it for yourself, change it, do whatever you need to do so that you guys understand fluid and electrolytes. And make it your own. Cheers, it's been fun.